In this episode, we'll go through the rebuilding of the apron. So here you'll see I have the gear temporarily mounted. Quick tap pulls it out from the shaft that I machined the other day. And so here you can barely see the two. Um, the one was just a one piece, and now the other piece has a set screw on it. So I just bought the pinion gear from McMaster, took a piece of rod, and then used a mill to cut a keyway that I dropped a piece in. And so they're practically identical. The gear pitches are different. Um, but since the gear was part of the problem, it became quite easy. So here you'll see I have to reassemble it. We'll go over that next. Uh, it's got three levels. So the first piece actually fits in a bushing uh, into the apron. And so it all has to start in the front. So the pinion sticks out, then behind that is this gear. The keyway goes in first, and then the gear goes in secondary. I spent a second trying to work out which way it went, and concluded that the um, flat side was against the outside piece, just based on wear. It would have been something good to film pulling apart, but Things are easier in retrospect. And so now I'm going through and trying to work out exactly how it pushes back together. Because that's pretty much all that's required. That and uh, there'll be four bolts holding the case on. It was a bit difficult to try to get the case aligned. You'll see I pull out the hammer, um, give it a few taps, try and check that everything was rotating as it should. Um, play with the crank, cranks lining up awesome, everything's turning smooth, no problems at all. So this part was fairly smooth, and since it all was working, the next thing I needed to do was start bolting the two pieces together. There's a slight alignment issue, um, but nothing terrible. One thing I forgot is, and I had to pull it back apart, was there was no grease on the inside. And so I greased, actually what I started with was this lead screw engagement. These are the two half nuts that are there. And I greased this area um, so that it would operate smoothly. Before the grease was all old and cruddy, it really was terrible. Then I grabbed the two pieces. Uh, there's a top and a bottom. The top has um, like a, an angle piece to it. You can kind of see it in the top part of the picture. That slides underneath the other tube. And that then sits into, in place. The other one just sits slided into the keyway. And then there is a piece of metal that applies a sideward force. And that actually has two screws. So I put a little bit of grease on that as well. Um, Spent a bit of time trying to decide between grease and oil on several of these pieces. And most of the time I went for grease just because they wouldn't be susceptible to capturing uh, little shavings. So I tightened this piece up to flat blade screws, which are pretty interesting to still see flats. And no problem, everything's good. So crank it down by hand as well as I can. smooth as butter. And then I tightened the two side pieces back to where they were previously. Since it had been poorly painted, it was pretty easy to see where the stopping point was of each piece. And so I have yet to adjust that further. Still smooth as butter. From there I add some grease to the gears. Uh, when I first pulled this apart, I must have used almost a roll of paper towels trying to get all the grease off. Um, in retrospect, I probably could have left a lot of it on there. Um, but I'll end up pumping in grease using a grease gun. Pretty much any surface that had a tooth on it or interfaced with a tooth, I put a squirt of grease on. Then I took the pinion shaft with the drive gear 
and lined it back up. Started to reassemble the two pieces. What you'll see here is a lot of fumbling. I didn't. This piece was kind of interesting because it never went together smooth as it should. Um, so, Persuader came out. Lots of random tapping in various places, and we were in good shape. And so, the next thing to do was run the four screws in. Four bolts. Apologies. Took a few seconds to try to find the socket, and once I found the socket, um, started tightening everything up. Not before dropping the socket that I didn't need, and then wondering where I put the socket, and it was still sitting on the bolt. Well, we're tightening things back up here. Apologize for the mess in the background. Um, using typical car technique of just tightening them somewhat evenly and in a cross type uh, manner. And then finally there was one other bolt that held the bearing for the crank to move the apron left or right. And so next we try to mount it on the lathe. In my mind, I'd done this a few times. Um, was to loosen this bearing block, pull the bearing block off, slide the apron on, and then bolt the two pieces together. So that's what I attempted to do the first time. Was not the most successful piece. Once again, abusing a screwdriver like it was not meant to be used. Pulled the piece off and then just wiggled it until I could get the piece out. Last time I reassembled it, I oiled that thing so badly that it practically flew out of my hands several times. I try to pull out the lead screw because that would have made life easier. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. Um, try to pull it out, that obviously failed, so what I did is I then pushed it back in and tried again. Interesting thing about the apron is it's pretty peculiar to lift it up. Here I get the bolts ready so I can put it on, slide it over, and then bolt it down. At least that's how the plan went. I get all three bars lined up. I look for something to use to get them in roughly the right place because there's three points that each of those rods are going to roll through on the apron. So we're pretty much lined up. I grab the piece. Really needed more hands. The thing's just somewhat clumsy. And that didn't work so well. So what I did next is I broke out the engine hoist. Took a piece of chain, put it to the top. Uh, to one of the bolts. There you'll see me adjusting the camera. And what I'll end up doing is I'll use the engine hoist, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Um, even in fast forward, this looks slow. And my goal was to try and get it to hang vertically. So we're getting there, we're almost there. Grip our chain and start to pull it upwards. And so this part was pure genius. If I had to do it over again, um, I probably would have left the saddle and the apron attached to each other and slid the whole thing off as one, but hindsight's perfect. And so now I didn't have to worry about trying to hold it in a line. I could just use the alignment side. Not the easiest thing. There was two hex rods that had to be just the right direction as well as the lead screw. Um, and so a good bit of fumbling around to get that again. And I lifted it up slightly, tried to work out what was going on. Some backwards and forwards pulling. Um, I think what I actually found in the end is one of the hex rods was out of phase slightly. And so we made some progress, we lifted it up. Then what we needed to do was pull the entire lift forward. And once the lift was forward, um, Oh, here we go. Now pulling the lift forward, moving the saddle over. That saddle is so smooth uh, once it was oiled. 
So now I'm looking for something to interfering or any issue. I think at this point the lead screw is slightly um, engaged in part of the half nut. Just used a screwdriver to slightly push it apart. And then it was pretty much on. Um, at this point there was no rack installed, so turning that handle really didn't do anything. But that was a good start. And then push the engine hoist over more and you can see at this point we're pretty much riding on all three. And my hope here would be that it would just slide underneath the apron. Since the bearing wasn't attached to the other side, and remember I mentioned it was slippery, um, I went ahead, put the bearing support in place. I guess I added it out, dropping it. And I thought this is logically how it should go together, but I was mistaken. You'll see shortly. So at this point, I feel pretty good about it being on those three rods and started to loosen the Allen head bolt. Pull the chain out. And so here you can see the big Homer Simpson dull moment that the gear is protruding out and on the bottom of his saddle is a piece that was holding it up. So that was the end of the night. Um, and so here's the installation of the rack that you can see in one of the subsequent videos. I believe it's part nine. And so I'm working to get it in place. It had locator pins as well as through bolt holes. Um, and so the interesting thing was trying to get all of those aligned. The holes I drilled were slightly undersized because I felt like the last ones were sloppy. In retrospect, I understand why they were drilled the way they were. Move the saddle over. And then tighten the Allen bolts up. various bolts. Uh, there were five in total. Um, the middle one actually seemed to be the hardest to get, uh, but nothing, nothing major. So we went, we put everything in, gave it a good final tighten. Uh, this really sucked it into the rack. Uh, and so really what I did here is I loosened that end bearing for the rods, which allowed me to lower or lift the apron. So pull the bearing out, it was supported by a 2x4, you'll see I dropped the 2x4 out of the way, lift, get it underneath the apron, and now we're pretty much aligned. So what I have to do next is use the Allen head bolts, and I attempt to use those to suck the two pieces together. First one went in easy, the others kind of had a bit of an alignment. Uh, we can call it a problem. So I'm trying to use the Allen head, the Allen um, key to align the poles. Finally get it somewhat close to right, drop the next one in, tighten it down, and at this point two out of three and Bob's my uncle. Here you can see I'm trying to remove the end block to see if that's holding anything in place or out of place. Remember I said it was oiled? thing was slick as all. Um, so at this point, I'm physically lifted up and you can see everything's aligned perfectly. 
saddles in place. Now we can crank it down. Sorry, apron is in place. Just check that everything's fitting as it should. No issues. And then from there, I added this collar. There is a forward reverse neutral lever on the front of the lathe, and that is keyed. There's a slight pin on the bearing block. And so I just wanted to make sure that that piece was on. I did not put the keyway in first. Line up the bearing again, um, move the entire assembly over, makes it easier. This orange hammer, I swear, you would think I was a two-year-old playing with a hammer. I had such a good time using it. Some problem, it's not sliding in. It turns out to just be the slight amount of dirt. I then use a wrench to try and pull the pieces out because obviously there's a pin that it's going to have to locate on. Eureka! We have it. Um, then I'll line up and use the cap screws to pull that part into place. A little bit of fumbling. I actually pushed that on too far. And then from there, it was a whole lot of turning that um, on those cap screws. If I was going to do this project again, and I probably will end up doing part of it again. I would definitely go buy a set of sockets that have Allen screws on them. There's my advice for the day. And so there, the carriage is on. You can see it's working awesome. It's gripping the gears. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and there'll be more coming. Thanks again.